so you've got these two schools, these two economic schools of policy. One is basically austerity. It says the debt is the worst thing uh, that we can possibly have. We've got to get rid of the debt, the deficit, which is the yearly uh, uh, deficit that becomes a cumulative debt. Uh, and then the other side that says, uh, no, we need more, uh, more spending, more stimulus now. Maybe we can worry about the debt once the economy gets going, but we ought to do something in the interim to stimulate the economy. And, that, and you have and essentially that battle, and that's been going on for a while. It's, it's, it's preoccupied Washington, uh, the entire, really the entire Obama administration. It preoccupied most of Washington during the Clinton administration when I was there. Uh, it's become a, 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 a really a, a battle where there is no compromise at all. Uh, those people who think that the biggest problem right now is debt, well, they, they just don't know what they're talking about, if I may be politely, uh, say it politely. Uh, the debt, I, I didn't expect an applause on that line. <laughs> I mean, because the, you see the deficit, the yearly deficit is coming down as a proportion of the GDP, the total economy, and what you really want to look at is the debt as a proportion of the total economy. That's the only meaningful measure. An absolute number means nothing. You want to look at the debt as a proportion of the national economy. It's quite large now, but it's not as large as it was after the Second World War. It was 120% of the national economy. In fact, I remember as a kid, uh, when I was about uh, five or six years old, my father, uh, who did not like Franklin D. Roosevelt, uh, he said, he warned me, he said, Bobby, you and your children and your children's children uh, will be paying down the debt created by Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, I was five. <laughs> I didn't know what a debt was, but I, but I had nightmares about it. I, I thought of myself and my children and my children's children. And, but the fact of the matter is, by the late 50s, in fact, by the, even by the mid-1950s, nobody was talking about Franklin D. Roosevelt's debt. And uh, my children, my, I have two boys, they're now 28 and 32, not in, once in their entire lifetimes have they mentioned Franklin D. Roosevelt's debt. <laughs> I have a five-year-old granddaughter uh, who's very articulate, very precocious, uh, very, I mean, she is really remarkable and very, very bright. And not once over the five years, <laughs> she's talked about everything except Franklin D. Roosevelt's debt. Uh, so what happened to FDR's debt? Well, what happened to that debt was that the ratio of the debt to the GDP changed. Not because we spent that much less. Yes, we did go from World War II uh, to uh, you know, a non-war, but we went right into the Cold War. We had a Korean War. We rebuilt Japan. We rebuilt Europe. We had the National Highway Building Program. We had the GI Bill. We, I mean, it wasn't as if we were skimping. The real reason that that debt-GDP ratio changed was because the economy grew so rapidly in the 1950s. You see, the problem we are having now with regard to our debt is that we're growing so slowly. We're almost, I mean, by some measures, we're growing, what, 2% annualized per year? I mean, this again, as I said to you before, it is remarkable on its own. It's even more troubling given how far down the economy has been. That's the problem. That's the problem.